bringing it back to 1990, kids. Let's talk Jacob's Ladder. The Ladder is a 1990 psychological horror film directed by Adrian Lin. It stars Tim Robbins as Jacob Singer, a Vietnam War vet who returns home to New York, only to be plagued by strange and disturbing visions that start fucking with his perception of reality. And from that point onward, this movie is just a ride. Now I'm gonna be real, I oftentimes find it difficult to tackle older movies on my own. Most of the times I've done throwback reviews, it's been for films that I've seen prior, and it's me showing them to my co-stars who haven't seen them before, so I have a lot to discuss. This time, though, this was my first viewing. So sitting here, I'm kind of at a loss for words, not only because I'm still processing a very impactful film, but also because I'm trying not to echo the sentiments of Ryan Hollinger, who has already done a video on this movie, and a very good one at that. Which, if you haven't seen, you should definitely watch. I'll put the link in the description. What I ultimately can say is this. Jacob's Ladder is a film that is equal parts beautiful and haunting and terrifying. It's a perfectly paced psychological deep dive into the traumatized mind of a man who's suffering for a number of reasons, and it functions well as a straightforward narrative and as an allegory that gives you a lot to think about. And given that the story is heavily rooted in the Vietnam era, its prevalent themes of damnation versus salvation really raise a lot of valid questions about whether or not we even did any good in that war. The scene toward the end where Louis is fixing Jake's spine and is talking about Eckert's view of hell is honestly beautiful and may have become one of my favorite scenes in anything ever. Now if you figure out where it's going early on, you're not going to be in for any real surprise by the time the ending rolls around. It's the kind of film that, if you're seeing it now, is very predictable because it's been done a million times since, and it inspired Silent Hill, so if you're a fan of those games, you know exactly where this movie's going to take you. But the cool thing about this movie is... it doesn't really matter. It's not the destination that's important, it's the journey to get there. And the journey to get there is mind-bending and wild. It heavily messes with your perception of what's real and what isn't, and by the end, you're feeling as crazy and as gaslit as Jacob is, and that's the entire point. Bottom line, I don't really know how it took me 25 years of my life to see this movie. If you're seeing it for the first time now, it's not going to reinvent the wheel for you or anything, since so many films have aped elements of it since then. But there's still so much about it to appreciate, from its frenetic editing to its fantastic acting, to its beautiful cinematography and tightly paced script. And because of all that, I'm going to say that Jacob's Ladder is absolutely a must-see. It's a staple film of the 90s, and if you haven't seen it yet, I'd highly recommend doing so. The remake, on the other hand... It's, uh, it's awful. <music> Directed by David Rosenthal, it tells virtually the same story as the original, except this time Jacob has a brother who maybe died in Afghanistan, but maybe not, and maybe has a thing for Jacob's wife, but maybe he doesn't. And instead of Jacob going through all the shit that Jacob from the original goes through, his brother's the one going through it, and Jacob's kind of an awkward outsider looking in, and it totally defeats the purpose. W where do I even start? All the atmosphere is gone. All the style is gone. The weird hallucinations are toned down. How the fuck does the blurry head effect look better in 1990 than it does in 2019? Weird faceless monsters with lizard tails? Nah, fuck that. Let's just have demons that look like every generic possessed person from every exorcism film ever. Michael Ely is usually a good actor, but here? It's like he knew the movie was gonna be bad, so he just didn't bother trying. Jacob, in the 2019 version, is a boring fucking character. And like I said, because he's an outsider looking in at the situation, we can't even really relate to him because he's not the one suffering. So all we're left with is a boring protagonist trying to navigate his way through a completely unintelligible plot with zero charisma and zero likability, and jump scares being thrown in your face every two seconds. Because, you know, if there was one thing that the 1990 film was missing, it was fucking jump scares. Subtlety? Who is she? I don't know her. Pacing? That's a fucking laugh. There's no pacing here to speak of. This movie is boring. The plot makes absolutely no sense, and by the time you get to the twist ending, you're left wondering what it was you just watched, trying to make sense of any of the details in your head, and feeling 
really mad and empty. Any sense of mystery is stripped away from the film in the first two minutes when you see a character overdosing on drugs and hallucinating and dying. So you know, all the hallucinations that Jacob was having in the original film, where you're not really sure what's going on, is he going crazy, are there actually demons? Nah, that's just explained away in the first two minutes of this film. Oh, it's drugs. Somehow this movie misses the entire point of the original film and manages to take what was already a fairly simple story and mangle it and make it so convoluted that it is pretty much unrecognizable if it weren't for character names. Oh, what's that? The 1990 film was a deep dive into the socio-political environment of the times and an interesting look into the human mind and soul? Yep, none of that to be found here, despite the fact that the current state of the world we're living in, and the way we treat our veterans, and the moral quandaries of the war in Afghanistan are all prime real estate to explore as themes in a movie like this. But nah, we need more boring brother versus brother drug addict drama and screaming demon people. One last thing before I wrap this up. Remember how I was talking about Louis' speech in the original and how that scene is really haunting and beautiful and probably one of my favorite scenes in anything ever? How hell just burns away the parts of you that aren't ready to die and eventually when you accept your fate, the demons become angels and take you away to, you, to heaven? It takes that super impactful, hopeful speech and instead of making it a beautiful, intimate moment like it is in the original, it makes it a throwaway line from Jacob's therapist in the hospital lobby. No impact, no real meaning behind it, no connection to the film's overarching narrative or themes. It's just there to say, look, we have that speech that was famous from the original, and now we have a reason to call it Jacob's Ladder. In conclusion, Your Honor, I cannot believe that in the same year-long span that we got Suspiria and the Child's Play remake, two movies that are prime examples of the proper way to remake a film. We also got this uninspired, unintelligible mess with absolutely no redeeming qualities to it whatsoever. There's nothing redeemable here. There's nothing good here. Jacob's Ladder 2019 is a fucking garbage fire. It's the perfect example of why remakes get a bad rep and why I have to constantly fight people to say, no, not all remakes are bad. But then movies like this exist and I'm forced to go, shit, I can't argue against this. There's no originality, there's no love, there's no soul, there's no passion. Just a giant fucking mess where it feels like everyone involved was only involved to get a paycheck, and they had to piss on the grave of a brilliant original film in order to do so. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this channel and you want to see more, click down there, like, comment, subscribe. You got two reviews for the price of one with this video, isn't that great? Don't you love that? There's a Patreon link down in the description if you do. Please consider donating. I would really appreciate it. It helps me make new, better quality content for you all to enjoy. I have really cool stuff coming up, especially in September. It's going to be a very busy month for me, but I'm very excited. So if you want to be like any of these cool people right here, you can click down there, consider donating. Even a dollar would help. I would really appreciate it. You get your name on the screen. It's really cool. It would mean a lot to me. But even if you don't, thank you so much for watching anyway, and I will see you all very soon. You will see devils tearing your life apart. And given that its story is heavily rooted in the Vietnam era, its prevalent themes of damnation versus salvation really raise a lot of valid questions about whether or not we even... Fuck. <laughs>